what is up everybody and welcome back to season four of our pro cyclist mode and it's going to be our first one in the uci world tour now that we have signed for bahrain victorious in last episode and in this episode we are going to try to start off as fast as we can at the santos tour down under and we are going to go ahead and jump straight into it with stage one of the Tour Down Under, a 147 kilometer flat stage. Uh, this definitely isn't going to be one for us, so we're going to look to support our sprinter, who I assume in this case is Fred Wright, with 70, 72 sprint and 72 acceleration. Uh, we're going to try and give him the best platform to win. And we do get our first look here at Vladimir Saracen in the new Bahrain victorious colors with the piping there on the sleeves and the neck of the white, red, and blue of Czechia, denoting that we are now just a former national champion. And we are here with 6K left to go. Vladimir Saracen trying to get to the front for Fred Wright. The energy gel will be popped. And Gino Mater is supposed to be in front here taking care of us, but we don't want to burn out a little too early. But now looks like a pretty good time to set on 92. And we're going to go ahead and sprint with about 1.5k left, somewhere around there. Let's go 1.6. And then Fred Wright is going to go ahead and start his sprint. We probably screwed him up there more than we helped. But it is going to be, it looks like Jasper Philipson, Jasper de Boist, Davide Ballerini on the podium for the first stage. Fred Wright coming in 20th place. Again, sorry <laughs> to him. Not a good way to uh, start off your career with your new team. And we are going to look to make up for our mistakes in stage one here on stage two. 134.8 kilometer hill stage has a nice little ramp at the finish. It looks pretty perfectly suited for us. If it's a little close there at the end I don't think we'll win because our sprint isn't good enough so we're gonna have to look to distance ourselves early and not let it come down to a bunch sprint and we are here with 9.5 K left Butrago is working for us and we are coming to the bottom of the last climb so we're gonna go ahead and set an effort hope team Vitell lets us through as Butrago, Butrago gets lost a little bit so now he's going to have to work hard to get us up front as an attack goes up by Hopkins. We are pacing at 92. This isn't a huge threat just yet. We're going to set it back down to 87 and go ahead and pop our energy gel. Buitrago doing a great job right now. Mater also following us just in case we need a second domestique, but Matisse Louvel deciding to go up the road early we're gonna go ahead and set our aerodynamic positioning our red bar not in a great spot right now but we are recovering a tiny amount is now we're gonna to have to move back up to 88 and nobody can really help us at this point as with 1k to go we can start our sprint and see if we can hold it till the end we absolutely can't though Jasper Philipson comes around. Vlad Van Mechelen looks like he's going to go ahead and take this stage in front of Jasper Philipson. That was a huge acceleration from him. I'm very surprised. Caleb Ewan coming in third. We come across the line in fourth, followed by Andrea Bagioli. And we probably used a little bit too much of our red bar a little too early. But it looks like we get a shot at redemption immediately at stage three. A 131.9 kilometer hilly stage where the final hill looks a lot steeper than the last one so this one I don't think is ending in a group sprint and it looks more suited to us so we're gonna go ahead and try and make up those 16 seconds we're down in GC right now and try and take the lead of this thing and we are here with about nine and a half K left and Santiago Butrago is going to try and lead us to the line. Mater, Lastra, and Suderland did a good job of pulling everybody back. And we're actually going to have to move Butrago 
this energy usage up to get to the front but we are absolutely going to nuke it from the bottom as attacks go up the road from Mauro Schmidt and that is not what we want to see and with about 5k left we're gonna go ahead and pop our energy gel of Buitrago on the case and Mauro Schmidt still maintaining his advantage 17 seconds to the good now Buitrago has to get on his bike to make this work as we are just about to start the final climb Buitrago now takes over Schmidt 12 seconds ahead we're gonna go ahead and start our sprint early Buitrago can do his own thing and then afterwards we're gonna set it on 99 we have half a kilometer left we have just been caught by Quinn Simmons but it looks like his energy is almost gone as he looks to try and come around but he can't as we are going to take stage three in the Santos Tour Down Under and Santiago Butrago actually coming across in fourth and we can see us there on the podium picking up five seconds to everybody besides Quinn Simmons so we will not will not take the lead of GC today but we will however be in second place by one second to Jasper Philipson and I think with one more hill stage left that does look like something we will be able to overcome in the coming stages and that is gonna lead us to stage four Norwood to Murray Bridge a 152.7 kilometer flat stage this is definitely gonna be one for the likes of Jasper Philipson but there's a tiny bit of elevation there towards the end and if we can push it hard enough maybe we can put some sting in his legs and take him out of this final sprint and we are here with about 10k left we're just sitting on Jasper Philipson's wheel he's the only rider we care about on this stage and he is in a decent position himself tucked in very nicely but it doesn't look like he has a ton of help around him Caden Grove sitting just behind him so we're just gonna be patient do our own thing wait for this little elevation change and see if we can shake him around then but for the time being we're gonna have to get ready to use our energy gel at about 5.3 K left seems like the right time to do it and now we're gonna go ahead and set our energy usage up to 87 Gino Mater taking the wind for us we might have lost Philipson right there over that tiny little hill so now we're gonna set it up to 92 up this elevation we should be able to really use that right now and we're gonna go ahead and start our sprint Philipson back here as long as he doesn't win the stage we should be doing good he's weaving through but it is gonna be Sam Wellsford and Caleb Ewan to come in 1-2 here in Australia big for them but even bigger for us Jasper Philipson sitting down in 10th place gets no bonus seconds on us and that is gonna lead us into stage 5 Glen Elk to Victor Harbor 147.9 kilometer flat stage but if you look here there are a couple hills not too far from the finish line where I think we might be able to lose Jasper Philipson but again it's been four years if we look at the favorites by now he has 74 in the hill department so he's not gonna be an easy one to drop but with the team we have at Bahrain Victorious how good we are on the hills I see it as a real possibility and with 23 K to go we have reached the second to last hill we are trying to get out in front and use up some of our energy to put Jasper Philipson behind but right now he is looking pretty strong tucked in behind Sviragli and Osborne but we come around right here Gino Mater working for us we're gonna set it up to 92 and we're gonna make Jasper Philipson work to keep up with us this is gonna be a lot harder on his legs than it will be on ours and if we do create a little separation like we just did right there we're gonna try and keep it together Fred Wright you can actually do your own thing and now we can sit up a little bit and they're gonna have to work just as hard to catch up to us but right now we have a 16 second gap so maybe it's worth 
pursuing this until the downhill. Fred Wright also has a little bit of a gap sitting there in E2. You can see Philipson back there as well. But Mater sticking with us, doing a great job. And can we get an acrobatic descent off right here? I think we can. But will it be worth it in the end? Now that they have reached back on, but our acrobatic descent is going to create another little gap for us. But I think at the end of the day, it's probably not a good idea just to push on with this attack. Gino Mater, do your own thing. We're going to get some stamina back. Hope that Jasper Philipson is worse for wear after that. We can take a look. Uh, not really. It didn't make a difference whatsoever. So we're going to sit back here, have Gino protect us again, and wait for this sprint finish. And with 4K left, Philipson in perfect position. Gotta imagine he's going to go ahead and win the stage as we just try to come around. Maybe we can get in the way, block him off. It seems a little cheap, but we really want to start off our Bahrain victorious career with a win, but it's going to be Jasper Philipson. There's nobody else that can keep up with him. The man does it again. Jasper Philipson coming in first place, getting 10 bonus seconds, followed by Caleb Ewan and Declan Trezise here on stage five. And it all comes down to this stage six, McLaren Vale to Willunga Hill, a 150.4 kilometer hill stage that I don't think any of those sprinters are going to keep up with us on that last hill, so we have to be considered favorites. We'll look out more for Quinn Simmons and Jasper Philipson in this stage as we look for a GC win at the Santos Tour Down Under. And we are here with about 7K left to go, approaching the last climb to Willunga Hill. Gino Mater, again, is going to be the one working for us. Fred Wright, he can just kind of sit back and do his own thing. We don't want to pace that ourselves and with about four and a half K to go we're gonna go ahead and pop our energy gel as Gino Mater doing a great job getting us to the front and we are gonna go ahead and use some energy early and see if we can attack up this hill staying in front of the Yumbo Visma guys but with two and a half K to go we're gonna Set that there. Gino Mater, you just maintain your position. We have a tiny gap right now. Jasper Philipson is with us. And with 1.4 left to go, we're going to set it up to 92. I don't think anybody's going to be able to follow this. Uh, use aerodynamic positioning as well. With 0.8, we're going to start our sprint to try and create a little gap. And it looks like we do have a tiny one, 20 seconds back to the Jasper Philipson group as we are going to come across the line in first place, celebrate a little late, and I don't know if we had a big enough gap to get a second there, but as Jasper Philipson hasn't come across yet, I think it's going to be pretty safe to say that we will be the winner of the Santos Tour Down Under. And as you can see, we did get a decent little gap back there to Ben Tullett and the rest of the group, which means we have won our first race in Bahrain Victorious Colors by 22 seconds, eventually ending up 25 seconds up over Jasper Philipson. And I think that pretty much signals our intention this year that we're not here just to take part anymore. We're looking to really make a name for ourselves and dominate these hilly races. And after that race, we do get a level up was our first C uh, UCI World Tour stage race win and the first leader's jersey we've won. So we got a decent amount of points from that and we've also got 88 XP points from our race director. We won the stage, one young rider, one best climber, third in points and finished first in the general classification. So a little bit unfortunate for us as we wanted to train a little bit more before we got our level up. And after that unfortunately timed level up, uh, we can only choose between Puncher and Northern Classics 
and both of them have not been trained much at all this year. So we're looking at very marginal gains for what could be our last increase in attributes for the rest of our career. But if we do have to choose between one of the two, I'd rather become even better in the hills, get a little more stamina, a little more resistance. Hopefully, at some point, we can improve just a tiny bit more. But for now, I think Puncher's going to be the choice. And for our skill point, there's really two options here. Go super leader and have somebody be able to surpass themselves for us in a race, which seems like it would be super useful on a team as strong as ours. Or go fitness peak to have consecutive target periods. But I think right now, super leader is going to be the move because we do not have a jam-packed schedule quite yet. We do ride two grand tours this year I will let you in on that little secret but for the time being I think super leader is probably our best choice but that will bring an end to our first episode of the fourth season and I think it was pretty successful like I said we are looking to dominate every hill race that we enter and the next episode is going to be a very good one as we look to take down Stratabianchi, get at least a stage win at Perry Nice, we'll at least show all the fun looking stages, and then take on Milano San Remo as we look for our second monument win. But I wanted to say thank you for all of the support on this series. It means a lot. Hopefully, you guys like the better graphics. I got a lot of comments about it, so. We're going to stick with those. So if you did enjoy the content, please feel free to leave a like and subscribe. I try to release one video of this series every week, two if life permits it, and one episode of our Team Sky career mode every weekend. So for now, I just wanted to say thank you, and I will see you later.